Somehow we managed to have the final project of our home, which is the outside task of building the skirting, fall within the hottest weeks of the year. It's not exactly the job we would choose to do during a time with average temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's been the way it's worked out. We haven't picked up the camera and talked quite as much because we've just been focused on getting the skirting done as quickly as possible. That being said, because of the intense heat wave, things have definitely been a little different than normal. These hot summer days have been filled with more than the average amount of sweat, handfuls of blackberries, new snakes that we've never seen before, lots of bubbles, absolutely no rain, well, because we're in a severe drought, countless walks in the woods, and of course, tons of sunshine. These have been our hottest summer days yet, living off grid. Our annual boogie picking. And to our left, we have the wild ass. Feels like we haven't done one of these in a long time. I know. It's bringing me back to the time whenever we first introduced IO to everybody. It's been a minute. Sitting out on the buckets. <laughs> We've probably done one since then, but yeah, it's. We haven't sat down and talked in a while. <laughs> right. So, that being said, we wanted to kind of touch on this intense heat wave we've had this summer. It's something else. We've had so many. 100 degree days, 100 plus degree days, uh, I, I lost track, uh, I lost count. So normally during a summer you'll have, you'll it'll crack 100, but it's like middle to late July, early August, that's typically when you get it. And it's like for a couple days maybe. Yeah, but this- Not for weeks. <laughs> yeah, June 1st, it just seemed like the oven cranked on and we were full on summer. Yeah, the grass is so crunchy. <laughs> yeah. Everything is fried. Yeah, so we've experienced a polar vortex <laughs> and a heat wave since we've been out here. Getting all the extremes. Yeah. But yeah, with this insane heat that we're having, we've actually been having a little bit of an issue. It's not a huge deal, but it's something that we never thought would be a problem when we have an abundance of sunshine and that's an issue with our solar. Yeah, this the whole solar thing's been a total learning experience, mm -hmm. but I didn't think summertime we would have power issues. And the reason why is because it's overnight. First of all, like during the day, abundance amount of power, like more than what we can use. We charge up the batteries, we do everything we have to do. But the problem is when nightfall comes, it's just been so hot. You'll still have, it'll be in the 90s, high 80s at night. And it, it's just, it drains, with the AC, it just drains those batteries down pretty much to empty by morning. And with that being said, they're already recycled uh, batteries. So they've already had, they've already done their job. And then now we've been using them for the last four years, which we've drained them down and charged them up and put them through the ringer. And they're not in a good environment right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're- In the old barn. They're just in a metal enclosure pretty much in the old barn. So it's, 
this is our own fault. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, it's been quite the learning experience, but yeah, the batteries just get so drained down that we've been having some power problems. Yeah. I mean, it's it's only been a couple nights so far, but yeah, if you go out in the morning, they're pretty, they're near empty if not empty. Right. So, battery upgrade is uh, <laughs> definitely needed, but as far as solar production with this new array, with the new ground mount array with the adjustable, it, we have plenty of power. Yeah, the solar panels are great. It's just the battery issue. Yeah. If it's not one thing, it's the other, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, with the batteries draining, we have lost power, I think two times. Something like that. It happens like first thing early in the morning after the AC has been working super hard all night and yeah. Just, I never expected that to happen. Right. Like this is something that is a problem during winter time, not summer. Right. I mean, like I said, everything's been a learning curve and mm. one of those learning curves is also our rainwater. <laughs> oh God. We've had to haul in water a few times. Uh, 500 gallons at a time. Oh, actually a little under 500. Cause I don't want to, that CRV can't really, isn't supposed to pull that much, but I do. <laughs> so yeah, we've had to haul in water and it's, we need rain. <laughs> yeah. Consistent rain, not just like a sprinkle for a couple minutes and then it's gone. I know, but we haven't even had that. Yeah. Yeah, so any advice to anybody wanting to go off grid Oversize. Oversize everything. Yep. Because like with our solar, with our rainwater catchment, everything that we've done, we we keep track of how much we use. Like we would have an idea of how much water we would use in a week and power and all of that. And then we sized our things accordingly. And we thought we even oversized a little bit with things and so that we could have more than enough. Mm -hmm. And we still have issues, so. Yeah like really oversized things. <laughs> yeah. Or at least do it in a way that you can easily expand on it in the future. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and if you're gonna oversize anything, your battery bank is probably my number one thing I would oversize. Yeah, because it's just not good to drain them constantly. Yeah, and also you don't wanna use like ha your battery bank for three or four years and then realize, oh yeah, I need to upgrade. And then you put brand new batteries in there along with the ones that you've already uh, been using for a few years. So their, their life is already lower versus the new battery. So right. I would just oversize batteries at first. Water, you can upgrade at any time, as long as you got the room. Yeah, but as far as things that we would do differently, I mean, that that's a conversation for another time because there's yes. a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's many things. I could probably write a book on all the things we would do differently. <laughs> a novel. <laughs> well, on that note, you ready to get to work? Yeah. You're almost done. You're almost done. <laughs> Do you see where it went? Oh, there's another one. There's two snakes. Yeah. 
I've never seen snakes that look like this before. How's it going down here? Doing good. Just a pain in the butt crawling down here and cutting each individual piece. Well, on the upside, at least you're not in the sun. <laughs> this does not look easy hammering on your side. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Baby, this is quite the view. <laughs> Hiding in like this one foot of shade. <laughs> it is so hot. It just, every summer seems like it's getting worse. <laughs> Maybe it's just because we've been acclimated to the uh, AC now. Right, well I feel like normally you can be in the shade and if the wind blows, it feels nice and cool. But this, it literally feels like you have like a hair dryer on. Yeah. Blowing on you. Yeah. It's just, all of it's hot. My contacts, it's like the second I walk outside, it, like all the moisture <laughs> goes out of my eyes. It's horrible. On that note, you ready to work outside today? I am very happy to say that Spencer is on the last little section of the skirting. He just has a little section behind two of our AC units and then that is it. Then the house is done, officially. <laughs> So with this area, he is going to be building not really a door with hinges like he did on the other side of the house, but he's going to have like a removable panel so he can get under the house over here if he needs to. But that's yeah, it. Yeah, I just, I didn't want, uh, building the door, a functional swingable door was a little bit of a pain in the butt just because the skirting's in, it just follows the, uh, the dirt, the earth, and I mean, it's not square, so it's it's really hard to do. Right. Um, so with what I was thinking with this is just yeah, just kind of make a panel that I can remove like four screws, and I can have access over here. I mean, if I need access from this side, you know, it's like I'll rarely be under the house, so most of the stuff is on the other side of the house. So I mean. I can access it from over there, but for whatever reason, I still do have an access point over here. You mean you don't want to hang out down there? No. <laughs> You've had your fill of being under the house. Oh yeah, I, I'm so over it.
So what do you think of this thing? I think it looks good. I just don't like how like the deck and the pump house and everything else is so dark compared to the skirting, but right. I guess that comes with time. I wonder if it's because the wood, on the underlying wood grays like cedar does. That's right. why it seems darker, or well, if it's just the several co coats on it. Yeah, I think that's the thing, is the stain fades, then the sun changes the color of the wood, and then you eventually add more stain, so it's just, the color yeah. just totally changes. Yeah. I think it looks good, though. Yeah. <laughs> We're sure as hell not changing it. <laughs> Pretty sure we have the cutest kids in the entire world. And no, I'm not biased. Yeah, I'm pretty sure every parent thinks that, <laughs> but I agree. <laughs> okay. No, no, don't play with those. <laughs> They're still in jail. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> What do you think? Is it gonna rain? I'm not sure. I know. Oh my god, we need it so badly. The earth is just fried. Thank you. 